Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayers on Wednesday, August 18th. Let's begin with our opening sentences. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. From Psalm 51. O depth of wealth, wisdom, and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are God's judgments, how untraceable are God's ways. The source, guide, and goal of all that is, to God be glory forever. From Romans 11. Our morning psalm this morning is Psalm 133. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It's like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It's like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. And our scripture reading this morning comes from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 to 16. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love. We must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. This is the word of the Lord. In today's passage, we get a glimpse of what it takes to achieve spiritual maturity. We must speak the truth in love to one another, which means that we must also listen as the truth is spoken to us, hopefully in a spirit of love. And that's the really hard part. It's much easier to point out the splinter in somebody else's eye than to listen while somebody tells us about the log in our own. But it's truly a supreme act of love to have someone speak truth to you, to have someone care enough about the log in your eye to bring it to your attention. Love doesn't allow the beloved to persist in behaviors that are harmful, either to others or to themselves. When we read in 1 Corinthians about how love endures all things, I think sometimes we hear that as love puts up with all things, which isn't quite accurate. Love doesn't put up with evil or harm. Love establishes limits, healthy boundaries that protect everyone in the situation. It's not loving to allow an abuser to continue to abuse, for example. Love sets limits. Sometimes love says no. And love calls out wrongs and seeks to make them right. Part of love is speaking truth to one another. Of course, the truth isn't always negative. It isn't always about something that's gone wrong. Sometimes speaking the truth takes the form of praise and appreciation, celebrating goodness and accomplishment. Love doesn't stay silent on the good stuff either. And in this passage from Ephesians today, Paul reminds us that the result of speaking and listening to the truth in love is greater unity and an all-around healthier community. Speaking the truth in love helps ensure that each part of the body of Christ is fully equipped and working properly. Speaking and listening to the truth in love allows us to be our best selves. So as we continue our quest to grow in God this month, May we open our ears to hearing the truth spoken in love 
and listen with receptive hearts so that we may grow and gain strength for our own betterment and for that of our community as a whole. Amen. Please join me now in a time of prayer and thanksgiving. Satisfy us with your love in the morning and we will live this day in joy and praise from Psalm 90. God of all mercies, we praise you that you have brought us to this new day. Brighten our lives with the dawn of promise and hope in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for the warmth of sunlight, the wetness of rain and snow, and all that nourishes the earth. We thank you for the presence and power of your spirit, for the support and encouragement we receive from others, for those who provide for public safety and well-being and for the mission of your church around the world. Merciful God, strengthen us in prayer that we may lift up the brokenness of this world for your healing and share in the saving love of Jesus Christ. Especially we pray for those in positions of authority over others, for the lonely and forgotten, for children without families or homes, for agents of caring and relief, for the church in Asia and the Middle East, for the church in Afghanistan. And for those you have given us to pray for in particular, Lord, we pray for healing for George Del Fabro, for Keith Geckler, for Diana Stearns, for Carol Barlow, for Kathy Saffel, and for Daryl McCollum. We pray for comfort for Lisa and Aaliyah, for the family of Rebecca Chase's sister-in-law, Kirsten, and for my friend, Teresa, and her family. We pray also, Lord, for those affected by wildfires this season here in California and elsewhere. We pray for the people of Haiti, and God, we pray for the people of Afghanistan. Eternal God, you never fail to give us each day all that we ever need and even more. Give us such joy in living and such peace in serving Christ that we may gratefully make use of all your blessings and joyfully seek our risen Lord in everyone we meet. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Please join me now in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go this day with this blessing from the book of Romans chapter 12. So far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised.